fellow Diamond Painting Addicts, and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne, and I'm here today for this week's Whip and Chat. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not new here, welcome back. Whip, W-I-P, stands for work in progress. This is my work in progress. You are welcome and encouraged to go grab whatever you are working on and sit down and work alongside while I chat, or alternatively, you can treat this like a podcast. Before I jump in, if you could do a couple of things for me, smash that like button and hit that subscribe button. Both those things help me out immensely and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed anytime I upload a new video. Okay, so I'm going to jump in today. I've got my kit. This is my Craftably Koala. You've seen it in a couple of other whipping chats. Sorry if that's getting a bit repetitive, but my other projects at the moment are just way too big for me to schlep them all the way in here to record um, while I chat. And I like to be in my craft room while I record my um, whipping chats, not only because that's where I normally film, but just because I can be a bit quieter I'm filming this during the day on the weekends when people are home and it's noisy and people are walking back and forth and watching TV and opening doors and making food. And so it's just easier for me. Anyway, um, so I'm going to be working on this. This is my Craftably Koala. This is one of my uh, big tens. So I want to keep working on this one in between working on all my other projects. I've got my new cat proof tray, which I'm loving. I've got a couple of pins. I've got my timer, my drills, my notes. I think I've got everything I need. I remembered a Kleenex and a drink because whenever I come in here to film, as soon as I turn on my studio lights, I sneeze. And then I end up coughing and I need something to drink. So hopefully I've staved all that off by bringing all of those in with me. And yeah, we'll just see how things go. So I'm going to rearrange things a bit so I can zoom you into the section where I'm going to be working today. So while I do that, you get your project arranged and I will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Okay, let me pick a color. I think I'll just pick the E. I'm going to continue going on this way. So let me find that color in my, here it is. Wow, that's all I have. That doesn't seem like very much. I hope I don't have that too many other places. Oh, it looks like just a few up at the top, so. Okay, not too bad. All right, let me get my drills shook here. I love how nicely they line up in this tray, okay. So I want to start with some life updates as usual. What's been going on in my life? Well, let's see. It's been really cold here. My son and I have started going back out for our daily walks, which has been nice. I'm actually really loving that. Uh, it's been good for us to kind of get back out doors on a regular basis. We don't do that enough when the weather's not great. So that's been good. However, uh, Wednesday morning this week, it was 25 degrees outside. So a little, I don't know, it seems like an abrupt change. Like we didn't really get a fall. We skipped straight, straight from summer into almost winter. And then I say that, and then today it was like 80 some degrees. So it's probably not as abrupt as I'm thinking, but it just seemed like it. it seemed like it was, you know, 80s and 90s. And then all of a sudden the high one day was 50 and we had all these frost warnings and everything. So had to get really bundled up and but it was good. We still went out and walked even though it was cold and he loves it. He loves it when it's cold like that. So he's been super happy about going out for a walk and doing all of that while it was not 9 billion degrees outside. Uh, what else is going on? I have started bugging my kids for their Christmas lists. Uh, I don't know if that's a thing that everyone does. That's something that we've always done in my family. Um, I think my mom started it when we were younger, and I think it started as a way for her to know for sure about, you know, what we wanted because we didn't have very much money and that way she wasn't buying something that she thought we would like. And 
it just became this habit in our family. You know, every year we made a Christmas list for mom of things that we wanted. She and dad would make lists for us. Um, and you know, I just feel like that's a good way. Not that I couldn't come up with a gift for people on my own, but I just feel like, you know, you know yourself better than anyone. And also sometimes, you know, maybe there's something that you've really been wanting, but you wouldn't buy it for yourself necessarily, uh, either because of the cost or because you felt it was kind of frivolous or, you know, for whatever reason. I think a lot of people do that and I, I'm the same. And so, um, yeah, I just ask my kids for lists. Now, buying for them is always hard because again, we're lucky enough that we don't need a lot of things. So, and you know, my kids are old enough now that what I think they want is never anywhere close to what they actually want. <laughs> so it's always just safer if I ask them. Although I got to admit anymore and my nephew, my oldest nephew included, it's their teenagers or early twenties. So it's like, mm, I'm just going to give you some cash if that's okay, which in some ways kind of seems like a cop out, but I'm actually okay with that. It's easy. And you know, again, they, that way they can have the money and go spend it on something without having to feel guilty about it because it was birthday slash Christmas money, gift money, whatever. <clears throat> And so maybe they'd get something for themselves that they wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So, and you know, sometimes they're saving up for some stuff. My daughter is saving up. She'd like to move apartments. So she's saving up for, um, you know, got to have that first month's rent for the deposit. And so, yeah, she's one of the things, not the only thing, but one of the things on her list this year is just cash. Okay. And this Multiplacer is not working for me for some reason. So let me try this one. I was using the other one because I don't need quite as many, but it's not working as well. So I'm going to do this. So yeah, is is uh, Christmas list, is that a thing in your family? Do you guys just, I know there are some families that you don't even, our family's never really been that big. But I know that in large families, a lot of times people will just be like, draw names out of a hat. And you, that way you only have to buy for one person instead of, you know, however many are in your family. We've never done that. But so is that what you guys do? Do you use lists? Do you just, I don't know. I feel like unless I have a list, it's kind of a crapshoot because I went out and looked at, oh, my husband and I have an anniversary coming up. And so I was out looking at not only anniversary gift lists, but uh, Christmas gifts lists, gift lists. And I got to tell you, 90% of the stuff that's on those lists is not anything that any of the people in my life would use. Um, the anniversary stuff. Okay. First of all, when you've been married for 10 years, is drinking a big thing? Because 90% of what was on the list was something to do with alcohol. It was a shot glass set or a shaker bar set or an ice cube set or, um, you know, a, a wine subscription or a beer subscription or beer glasses or steins or, I, I mean, every, it seemed like everything, an aerator for your wine. And, you know, nothing against people who drink. I don't have a problem with that. We just don't. So it, it wouldn't be anything that we would ever use. And, you know, then it was like, wallets and watches. And again, just maybe we're just one of those weird outlier families because we wouldn't use any of those either. I mean, my husband has a, an Apple watch, so he doesn't need a regular watch. He actually asked for one one year and we bought one and he never wore it. So I don't know. I'm not even really sure why he asked for it because he never wears it. But anyway, um, yeah. And the anniversary and, and Christmas gifts were kind of all the same. You know, when I went to go look at what to get, you know, the men in your life for Christmas, it was wallets and watches and stuff to do with beer or golf. Neither, nobody in my family plays golf either. So yeah, it was just a bit of a, <laughs> it was a bit of a realization to be like, oh, well, I guess if I don't get a list, I'm on my own because none of these things would work. So so yeah, I'm, I'm curious, do you 
how do you guys shop for those hard to shop for people in your life? Or do you, do you, do you just give them money or gift cards and let them pick out what they want? Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm just curious. Inquiring minds want to know, uh, what else? Oh, you guys, it's been a hard couple of weeks for me. I've really been struggling this last, well, it's probably been a few weeks with anxiety just for a variety of different reasons, uh, life in general, and just, yeah, I've just been really anxious. And you know how when you get anxious, your brain kind of gets into that spiral that you can't get out of and you can't turn it off. And then you don't sleep well, which means you have even more anxiety because you're not sleeping well. And it's just like this vicious circle. But anyway, I was just really struggling with some things and so it was a difficult week. However, there was a bright spot. I got called into sub at the preschool. So I think just getting out of the house for a bit helped. I mean, we, we get out of the house every day for our walks, but you know, unless I have an errand to run or something, sometimes that's the only day, the only time I leave the house. And Anyway, I, I ended up getting called into sub at the preschool and it was good. It was nice to see everyone again and nothing improves your mood like hanging out with a bunch of goofy preschoolers because they're always happy, always in a good mood. Not always, but you know, for the most part, they were all in a good mood when I was there. We were having gym day, so we got to take them down to the gym and they got to run around and they had tricycles out for them to ride and we were, it was transportation weeks. So we were talking about different modes of transportation. And so they just had a lot of fun and it was fun to be there with them and play and you know, kind of get to spend some time being a little kid again. So that was good. Uh, saw my oldest and She's doing really well at her new job. She's really liking it, which is good. That is a big worry off my mind lifted because that means that it'll be something that she can, you know, feel pretty good about doing long term. I don't know if she'll stay there forever. I suspect she won't, but for a while, this will be a good job for her until she kind of decides what she wants to do. I think sometimes we pressure our kids to figure out what they want to do for their whole lives way too soon. I mean, I think back to when I was 18, 20, graduating and going to college, and I had no idea really what I wanted to do. I mean, I had some inklings, um, and I actually I think I've said before, I ended up changing my major like three times, and at first I thought I'd be business, going into business, and then I thought I would teach, and then I ended up getting my English degree. And I have since, you know, I've owned several of my own businesses. Um, I'm contemplating opening a third. Um, I have taught for, gosh, 10 plus years. Uh, so, you know, I've done all those things, but that's not currently what I'm doing and that's okay. So, you know, I think sometimes that pressure to figure out what you want to do right now is a little crazy because, you know, even if you know what you want to do, I think those people are more rare than we like to think. Like my dad was one of those people. He knew from the time he went to school, you know, what he wanted to do. He, he had a plan. His folks couldn't afford for him to go to college. So he joined the military, did his time in the military, was able to pay for school using the GI bill. He went to school. He knew what he wanted to do. He wanted to be an engineer. He went to school and got his degree for that. And he very happily was an engineer for the rest of his life. Um, I just don't think all of us are that lucky. At least I haven't been, my sister hasn't been, my brother hasn't been, my mother wasn't, uh, my husband, weirdly enough, I think is one of those people. Well, I guess I shouldn't say that because he actually started out to do like be an auto mechanic and he kind of pivoted from that. But once he got into line work, that's what he's done. So he's been happy doing that. Okay, let's see. This is number seven. 
Ooh, this is one of those colors that I messed up when I was kitting it up and somebody thankfully told me that I had messed it up because I would have been so sad because I think it would have been really obvious. This is a darker color and the other one is a gray, but it's a very light gray. So it would have looked weird and I would have had no idea what I had done. So super happy someone pointed that out. We met my oldest today to take her grocery shopping. I try to every couple of weeks, at least once a month, if I can manage it, I take her grocery shopping and buy her some groceries. It gives me an excuse to spend some time with her and see her and have some nice conversations. And then I took my husband with us today. She hasn't seen him in a while and he'd been gone working on the hurricane. So he came with us and we went grocery shopping and then we went out to eat. So we had a good time, but <laughs> I had to laugh uh, because we went grocery shopping and I made the mistake of taking my husband with us because he is a window shopper. He loves looking at everything. So it always takes twice as long when you take him with you because he has to look at everything on the shelves. Even if he's not buying it, he has to look at it. And also he loves to try new things. So every time you know, my daughter and I would stop to get something on her list and she'd turn around. Where did he go? I'm like, oh, he'll catch up. And of course, you know, then he'd catch up. He'd wandered up with something in his hand to add into the cart. And I was like, could you please stop shopping? Because we ended up buying more groceries for us than we did for her. And mind you, this is after we had already gone for our regular weekly grocery pickup that we do. And so we'd already ostensibly bought our groceries for our household and he comes running, I need these and look at this and I want that. And so we ended up with a bunch of our stuff, <laughs> a bunch of stuff in our cart that we didn't actually need, but, but it was okay. It was nice. Like I said, we got to see her and so we had a good time and then we went out to eat and haven't done that in a while. My husband and I were trying to figure out where we wanted to go because our anniversary is coming up and he's, you know, let's get a hotel. Let's do that. And I'm like, I don't want to do all that. I, I mean, we could, but I just don't want to, I don't want to be out with all the people. I don't, you know, if we stay in a hotel, we sleep in a bed that's not that comfortable. And then we've got to be up and out by the time they want us, not when we're ready to go. And I was like, you know, I think I'd rather just stay home and then figure out something we're going to do at home. So this is how lame we are. <laughs> we bought a um, air mattress, which we were going to get one anyway, but we bought an air mattress and we're going to set it up in our living room and we're going to have like a little camp out in our living room and we're going to just kind of make a weekend of it and watch a bunch of movies and probably pig out on junk food. We're going to get takeout from two or three places that, you know, we've always wanted to try and we just haven't done it because uh, it never seems like there's time. And we're just going to do that. I'm trying to see if there's any other fours here. I've got a whole bunch in the koala, but I think I'm going to stick in the branches down here. So I'm going to move on to another color. Anyway, Probably sounds lame to a lot of people, but I think we'll have fun. I will have more fun than us being out and about with a bunch of people and just people sap my energy very quickly. It doesn't take me very long to get to a point where I'm like, it's too much. I just need to, I got to get someplace quiet and rest and reset. And so we could get a hotel room, but we just spend all of our time in it. So what's the point of that? You know, so yeah, I don't think we're going to do that. We're just going to do our stuff in the house. Anyway, so I told you guys that it had been cold here. And because it's been cold, we had to declare our garden season over. So last year we tried to do a box garden thing. It really didn't work. We just had, just didn't have luck with stuff. I don't know if we overwatered. I don't know if we planted too many things. I don't know, but we just didn't have any luck last year. So this year where we're like, okay, we're not going to do this big, like raised garden bed or whatever. We're just going to do 
some container plants and see what we can grow. So we thought, okay, well, my husband loves hot stuff. So we'll, we got some pepper plants and I wanted a tomato plant. So we planted that. And then he wanted some green onion slash chive. So we planted that. And it was just in these, you know, containers on our back deck and we, I would go out every day and water them and all that kind of stuff. And I don't know if we planted them too late, but it took forever for them to get blooms on them. And then once they finally did, like, that's all we had was the flowers. Our, my, our tomato plant never did actually grow any tomatoes. It would just flower and flower and flower, but then nothing would ever grow. And so... I was taking care of everything while he was down in Florida and things were going pretty good. We got, um, some peppers were actually growing. Like we had little baby pepper plants. I think one was a, one was, it was a bell pepper. So we had several green bell peppers on two different plants, but then on the same green pepper plant, one of them had what I swear looked like an eggplant. So, like, I'm pretty sure they don't have purple bell peppers, but maybe I'm wrong. But they just got to be very tiny. They were, the purple one was only about the size of a quarter. And then we did get a bell pepper that was mm, about the size of a small apple, but I don't think it's, I don't think it was good enough to eat. And we were kind of babying them and making them go along. And oh, you guys, I just put all those in the wrong place. <sighs> See, this is what happens when I talk and I don't pay attention to what I'm doing. So now I got to figure out where did I put all those? That is not where they belong. Okay. And these tweezers that are not sharp, I thought they would be better, but no. My problem with using these sharp ones is that I invariably end up scratching the drill and then I just have to throw it away because I can't see I can't pick it up oh, it's so frustrating okay anywho what was I talking about this drill is going straight in the trash because it's being so annoying okay let's see let me just push all these off since they're right here on the edge if i can get them off uh anyway we had to throw the plants away because i told you it got really cold here and i didn't realize it was going to be that cold and we didn't get them covered up in time and i thought they were going to make it it was really cold one day but just the one morning and it looked like they were going to recover and do okay. And then the very next day I went out and they were all withered and gross. And so, yeah, so much for my green thumb this year. I mean, we did actually get some things to grow, which <laughs> we didn't really have happen last year. But yeah, I was really disappointed because I was kind of babying them and looking forward to, you know, even if it was just one green pepper, it was going to be a green pepper that I had grown. And nope. So not meant to be, I guess. Okay, hopefully I didn't put too many of these up here. Oh, come on. See, I can't get a hold of them to get them off. Is that a two? Yep, I put that one in the wrong place. Come on. That one, that one, that one. See, I just scratched that one. Okay, I'm pretty sure that one is not where it goes. Thrill of the week, watching me pick drills off of a canvas, I'm sure. That's what I get for talking and trying to work on this stuff at the same time. Okay, no, are those in the right place? Nope. Okay. Well, at least I noticed before I got too far along, right? I mean, it's not the first time I've done this. I'm sure it won't be the last either. Now, where did that other one go? I thought I flipped it somewhere. But that 
that's it. Come on. There we go. Flip up so I can grab it. Okay. Is that all of them? Did I pick them all up? I think so. Yes. Okay. Whew. Because these are supposed to be on these right here. So let me try this again. Get some of them down on the right symbol so I can figure it out in my brain before I start talking. Anyway, so we had a very small, pretty much non-existent harvest. I think my husband did harvest the, the chives so that he could use those. Um, they escaped the frostbite, but he's the only one that will eat those. So not going to do a whole lot of good for my son and I. But next year, maybe, hopefully next year we'll be in Canada and we'll have some some land if we're up by his folks house we'll have some land where we can actually plant some stuff we we have an empty lot next to our house that we we own it so we could use it but i just feel like it's too much to take care of and trying to keep animals out of it and i mean for goodness sake we have a neighbor that lives near us well pretty much most of our neighbors all have dogs that they let wander loose which they're not supposed to do but they do anyway and one of our neighbors to the south of us has a pig and it wanders around everywhere. Not to mention the neighborhood cats and squirrels and whatever else birds is going to come by. And so we just felt like it hasn't been worth it to mess with it. But Okay, so let's see. Um... I told you guys I've been kind of struggling with things. My husband decided, just to kind of follow up with that, my husband decided that he wanted to move stuff around in the basement. Originally, he was going to keep all of his 3D printing stuff in my daughter's old bedroom. He had it in there for a while, then he decided he didn't want that in there. He wanted it to be somewhere else so that he could... Um, have it out in the great room down there so it's down where his computer is and all that kind of stuff and he wasn't having to run back and forth and okay whatever so we switched out where my diamond painting stuff was that I have downstairs um, which is basically just portfolios of finished projects and a few other things and move those things around but then when we were moving around we had to move my portfolios and I just started feeling guilty because I have three portfolios downstairs. I mean, technically four, but one of them's empty. So three. I have a very large portfolio that literally will fit a TV, a flat screen TV. That's actually what it's made for. And I'm using it as a portfolio for all of my very large completed projects. So my Lenore, my Grandiose Grease, um, some things that I started and finished before I actually had the YouTube channel. Um, I just have a variety of like really big projects that either I don't want to frame or I haven't framed yet that live in that big portfolio. And then I have two medium sized portfolios that basically one of them's empty. The other one has anything that is larger than a 40 by 60, but not so big that I think what's the largest one I've gotten in there 40 by 50 40 by 60 uh I might have gotten a 40 by 70 in there I'm not sure I can't remember the exact dimensions of the portfolio but anyway anything that like is bigger than a 40 by 40 40 by 50 has to go in that medium size unless it's too big for that and then it goes in the very large one but anyway that one, I have two of those. One is empty. The other one's about half full. And then I have my, I have two uh, small, I think they're 17 by 24 inch. One of them is completely full. And that is because I ended up, it's got stuff from 2021 in it. And then I started 2022 and putting things because it wasn't full. So I was putting my 2022 finishes in it. And then I did that September challenge with those 30 finishes. So those are all in there now. 
And so it's stuffed completely full. And I've moved on to, I think I have two or three of the September finishes in the, the second portfolio. But I just got to feeling guilty because they just sit in the portfolio. Like once I finish them, I don't do anything with them. Now I do have a couple of diamond paintings that I've done framed and hung up, but not very many of them. And to be honest, for a lot of them that I do, I don't buy them with the intent to display them. I buy them with the intent to just do them because my enjoyment is from the process of making them, right? Not in displaying them. Not that there's anything wrong with displaying them. It just isn't my focus. Like diamond painting for me is a chance to sit down and, you know, work on it kind of like a puzzle and just let my brain relax and be peaceful and calm and it helps my anxiety and yeah it, it's about the process of it for of it for me not necessarily the end product but I got to feeling guilty because I'm like I have all of these that are just sitting here and they're not doing anything and I don't want to just throw them away. That seems really wasteful. I mean, there's a part of me that says, you know, just do that. I've got pictures of them. It's not like I couldn't just take the pictures out if I wanted to and look at them. I could. So do I really need the canvases sitting around? I probably don't, but I don't want to just put them in the landfill. That seems wasteful too. I've considered, you know, everyone tells me, oh, you should sell them. But quite honestly, every time that I've looked on Etsy and other places, there doesn't really seem to be a market for people who want to buy ones that are already finished. People who want to buy kits and do them themselves. Yeah, there's a huge market for that. But people who just want to buy a completed diamond painting, even if it's already framed and ready to go, there just doesn't seem to be much of a market for that. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. If I am wrong, please tell me no let me know and tell me where I can find people who would like to buy them because I wouldn't have a problem letting go of a bunch of them. I just don't want to throw them in the trash. You know what I mean? So I don't know what to do with them. So I was feeling guilty about that because I just don't have a good answer for that yet. And I mean, that's something I've been thinking about since I started diamond painting, even when I did my very first one. And that was before, you know, Back then, I thought a stash was like three diamond paintings. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. So, yeah, I just don't know what to do with them, and I was feeling guilty about that. And this was on top of, I just, you know how sometimes you get those times where your brain just kind of gets stuck on something? And I just had had a couple of, seen a couple of things on social media that kind of made me start comparing myself to other people again. And, you know, I firmly believe that old adage that comparison is the thief of joy, that nothing good comes of comparing yourself to other people because we're all different. We all have our own paths to walk and, you know, nobody does, even if you're doing the same thing, you're not doing it the same way. That's part of why I have such a problem with social media because it encourages us to compare ourselves to other people and I just don't think that's necessarily healthy <laughs> mentally or, or otherwise. But anyway, as I'm sitting there, you know, and I'm trying to remind myself I shouldn't be comparing myself to other people. This isn't, you know, what I'm looking at, the, the things that I was seeing that was like, huh, it was like, I don't even really want that. So why am I letting it bother me and blah, blah, blah. Why didn't I do that? What is this person doing that I'm not doing because I feel like they're being successful at this? Um, you know, how come this person got to do that and I didn't? Um, you know, again, basically it all boils down to you get that whole, well, how come they did this, got this, had this, whatever. And it's basically all versions of why are they more successful than I am? So then whenever I get to doing that, you know, I always have to st step back because are they really, are they really more successful than me or is that my perception? And then I have to stop and think, you know, what does that mean? 
And so as I'm kind of sitting there contemplating everything, there was a video from this artist that I follow, Raffi and Klee. I love them. Uh, I've been following them for a long time and they are both artists. I think she makes jewelry and he's like a paint artist. Um, and they just seem like some of those people that really have it all together, you know, don't know whether they really do or not. Maybe that's just how they come across, but he always seems to have, you know, topical, timely advice. Do you guys have somebody like that, that, you know, somebody you follow or whatever, that just no matter what's going on every once in a while, it's like, huh, this seems like it was made for me. This video feels like it was aimed directly at me. So the video of him that week was, um, I think it was called why social media doesn't matter. And, you know, he had gotten some comments from some up and coming artists, you know, people that are trying to, to make it as artists and just being really discouraged because, you know, they don't have the numbers on social media and what are they going to do and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, his, his whole video was, does that matter? Um, and he went back and kind of took everyone back through his social media and, you know, for a good four or five years on his social media, um, I think he was using Instagram as an example, you know, 15, 20 likes per, per post. And he said, and I was really posting pretty regularly, which he doesn't do anymore because he's busy with art projects. And, you know, he said, I, I don't think that you should let that be a measure of your success because even though it didn't appear from looking at his social media that he was very successful he was still working as an artist, making a living as an artist. Uh, he and his wife both, they had been uh, interviewed both by several different magazines and had pieces written about them. They'd been going to all kinds of art shows. Um, he'd had a gallery show. Um, you know, they had been successful. Uh, I mean, not if all you looked at was their social media, but if you looked at all of their other things that they were doing and their lives as a whole, they were very successful. And so, you know, his point was you've got to kind of stop and look back at what is the point of all of this? Why are you doing what you're doing? And so that kind of made me stop and go, okay, wait, before I get really down on myself, what was the point of all of this? And, you know, when I started my YouTube channel, what was the point? The point was not to become YouTube famous. It was not to become a YouTube star. It wasn't to go viral. I mean, would all those things be nice? Of course they would. I mean, winning the lottery would be nice, but odds are it's probably not going to happen. So when I set out to do this, what was my goal? My goal was one, I had discovered this hobby and absolutely loved it. And I felt like I was learning a lot of stuff and it was fun and I wanted to share it with other people. Now, could I have done all that without starting the YouTube channel? Of course I could. What was the impetus behind starting the YouTube channel? The YouTube channel was also, hey, I know I'm probably not going to be working at the preschool for the rest of my life. My husband and I would like to travel. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a way to make some income that was not location dependent that we could do from anywhere. You know, we started watching like van life, RV life, that kind of stuff, people that travel all the time, uh, years ago. And so I started thinking about, you know, if he's going to travel for work, what could I do that would let me travel with him and still be making some money? You know, the goal was never to make enough money that we could live on. Would that be nice? Yes. But that was never my goal. Um, the goal was, here's the money that I'm making at the preschool with a, a quote unquote regular job. So could I replace that with income from YouTube with a job that would let me do the thing that I love, which is diamond painting and let me be location independent and earn money. And so that was my goal. And if I look at it that way and, you know, not look at it because 
did I go viral? Am I making a, you know, an income? Am I making enough to live on? No, in no way, shape or form do I make enough money to live on. I, we wouldn't even be able to buy groceries with what I make in a month, but that's okay. That wasn't the point. So as I go back and kind of reevaluate, am I successful? I have to stop and look at, well, what was the point? What was the goal? Did I meet that goal? Because if I met that goal, then I'm successful and I should stop comparing myself to, or comparing myself to other people. And so funnily enough, also, you know, I have my own goals and things. Some of them I've shared with you. Some of them I haven't. Um, some are personal, some are, you know, that have to do with my real life. Some are just things I don't talk about that have to do, you know, they may be diamond painting related, but I don't always share them with you. Uh, and then I, you know, my diamond painting goals that I have shared with you guys. And so going back and looking at those, it's like, okay, I'm doing it. I have not quite, but almost replaced what I was making at the preschool with my YouTube income. Like I said, it's, I'm not going to get rich off of it and that's okay. That was never the point. Uh, but it is something that I enjoy doing. It lets me be location independent. And so, you know, if, and when one of the things that we've talked about when we get to Canada is that, uh, you know, if my husband has to travel for work, it's a possibility that I could travel with him and I could do this and travel. Is it going to be the most convenient thing to do? No, but it is possible. And that was, you know, one of the other goals was to give us options. And it's done that as well. Um, so again, in that respect, I've been successful. And so after kind of, you know, taking that step back to look at, again, you know, would it be nice to have, you know, 20,000 subscribers on Instagram? Yeah, it'd be great. But it, was that my goal? I mean, I really got onto Instagram and Facebook as vehicles to help me get the word out there about my YouTube channel. Now, some of those goals have shifted slightly. I have some different goals now for the Facebook group and some things, um, that I want to do. And so actually some of my focus will be probably less on Instagram, which was my preferred platform for a while. I still like it because it's visual and, and I find it easier to interact on there than I do on Facebook. Just because I feel like, you know, perceived or not on Instagram, I feel like I see the stuff from people that I've chosen to follow. Whereas I feel like on Facebook, what I see is a lot of ads and occasionally I'll see stuff from people that I follow. Groups is slightly better, but even then I feel like, you know, the ads get to be overwhelming. And I mean, there's ads on Instagram, but I just feel like they're not as in your face and Facebook as Facebook. And maybe that's just my perception, but that's how I feel about it anyway. Anyway, all that aside, the point is after kind of reevaluating, what am I doing? Where am I trying to go? And all of that, hmm, I think I'm doing pretty good. So it happened to actually be either that day or the next. I hit a couple of my goals, goals that I hadn't really shared with you guys necessarily, but goals that I'm going to celebrate all the same. So I have now reached 3000 subscribers on YouTube. Yay. So a huge thank you to all of you for liking, subscribing, um, following all of that stuff. I really appreciate it. And I have reached over 200 members in my Facebook group. So I am super excited about that, which, you know, that may not sound like a whole lot to some people. I know there's some diamond, diamond painting groups that have thousands of members. Uh, that's okay. Everybody has to start somewhere, right? And I'm trying to do more things with the Facebook group. It's kind of a slow learning curve for me. Uh, I just, I'm trying to do everything on my phone. And sometimes that's a challenge for me. I just, my eyes are not all that great. Sometimes I feel like you don't have all the options on your phone that you necessarily get other places. 
or I'm trying to figure out how to do something and it takes me 20 steps to find out that this is where I need to go and then, oh, I could have gotten here six steps sooner if I'd done this, that, or the other thing first. So there is a learning curve for me, but I did hit those two goals. So I'm going to be figuring out a way to celebrate both of those because I'm pretty stoked about the 3000 subs. I never would have thought in a million years when I started that I would reach that far. I mean, everyone's goal starting out is to hit that magic thousand subscribers because that lets you, you know, start monetizing so that you can start earning some revenue, which is great. Uh, but you know, once you get beyond that, then where do you go? And that can be kind of difficult sometimes. So I get to kind of reevaluate, you know, like I said, I, I've taken a step back and thought, you know, I don't need to be envious of what other people are doing or feel like somebody has been more successful than me. Even if they have been, then, you know, more power to them. We should all be able to be successful, right? Uh, but what they're doing is not necessarily what I'm aiming for. So it's all good. Um, I'm doing my thing. And I think that's one of the things that um, I was reminded of, you know, I've met some really awesome people doing this. I've learned a lot in my diamond painting journey so far. I can't wait to see what comes next. I'm not done by any means. And all of that kind of just reminded me that I need to just keep doing what I'm doing, you know, keep doing my own thing. I don't need to worry about what other people are or aren't doing. It doesn't matter because they're not me and I'm not them. And so our journeys are not going to be the same. They may overlap in some places, but they're not going to be the same. And that's good. Whew, that was a lot. I didn't mean to bring it down. Guys, this is, how long have I been talking? Oh my goodness, you guys, I didn't start my timer. I swear I pressed the button. Okay, so I don't know how long I've been talking for. I'm just going to keep going. If I talk too long, it is what it is. Because that's just my life update. Now I got to get into my diamond painting stuff. I mean, I talked a little bit about diamond painting stuff, but you know. Uh, so in between feeling guilty, I think part of the reason I was struggling this last few weeks is that I have these projects that I've wanted to get done. And it's not that I don't want to do the projects, but I just... It's this constant self-pressure of finish this, move on, finish this, move on, finish this, move on. And I've, I've forgotten to enjoy the process. I'm still working on Miss Havisham. It's not going as fast as I wanted it to. And I think part of that is just my own, my own brain. You know, it's like, I look at it and it's like, oh, do I really want a diamond paint? And rather than force myself to do it when I don't want to, I've just, there've been a couple of days when I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to diamond paint today. I'm going to go do something else, whether that's read or watch TV or watch a football game with my husband or just spend some time with my husband or whatever. Now that comes with a side helping of guilt because then I'm like, oh, I should have worked on this. I'm not going to get it done in time. But if I don't get it done in time, it's not the end of the world. So it's good. So I'm just trying to, you know, be like, enjoy the process. And I'm actually enjoying the kit. Uh, I have finished most of the lady's big swoopy dress and I finished her two arms. I haven't got to her head yet. I finished the three mice. I've got the skeleton about up to his pelvis finished. And then I'm now starting on the actual Mrs. Havisham in the back with her little wedding dress on and everything. And I've done part of her cake and the table's done. So I actually ended up not making some of the changes I planned on. I was going to add in some glow in the darks uh, for like some of the candlelight and stuff. I still may do it for the green kind of glowy spectral stuff. I haven't gotten to that section of the canvas yet, but the where I was going to use them on the candlelight and stuff, they ended up not working because you can still see the symbols underneath and I just didn't like the way that looked. So I ended up not using those like I was going to. So it's gonna look a little bit different than I planned, but it's all good. 
and I'm still, you know, trying to remember, like I said, to enjoy the process. It's, I don't want to get so bogged down into running from event to event, from canvas to canvas that I forget to enjoy the process. Um, it, it's, I was actually watching some videos of people about talking about burnout and I don't want to get to that place. Um, I've gotten really close and I know when I get that close, I need to just back off and, and do some other things. And I can do other things that are kind of tangentially related, but are not directly diamond painting. Uh, one of the things that I've been doing is, well, because of all of the things kind of running around in my brain, I've been kind of stuck about where I want to go and planning for the rest of this year and the rest of next year. And, um, you know, I have some things planned, but then it was like, okay, well, what do I want to do here? And can I move that around? And things just didn't go exactly the way I wanted, which is not a surprise, but I'm just, I'm a planner. And I always find it really hard to kind of pivot when things don't go the, the way I expected. It always takes me longer than I would like to kind of recover and get back in the game and be like, okay, so instead of doing this, now I need to do, you know, instead of ABC, now I got to do XYZ. Sometimes it takes me a while to figure out what XYZ is. And that's where I've been stuck, I think. But I'm a planner. So what did I do? I went out and I found a bunch of planning stuff because that always makes me happy. I always joke with my husband that you know, if we ever win the lottery, my first stop is going to be a craft store and then an office supply store because I could spend equal amounts of time in both buying pens, paper, all kinds of stationery, you know, tape, dispensers, fun paper, all the things. Anyway, um, So I spent some time planning. I got my new planner, my, my life planner, as I call it. So I got my new happy planner for next year. Um, I've been working on my diamond painting logbook for next year. I still have to figure out exactly how I want to approach that. Um, I'm, I'm having conflicting thoughts about what I want to do and how I want to approach that. And so that's kind of kept me from getting any further with it. I finally sat down and actually made some headway with it. I've got a few more kinks to work out and then hopefully I'll be able to share it with everybody. And then I can put it on my filming schedule so you guys can see it because I keep talking about it. And I promise I have been working on it. I'm not just saying that. but I'm undecided what I want to do with it beyond that. So that's going to require me to just kind of sit down and do some really kind of hard thinking about it and make some decisions. But I was able to work on that and, you know, do some other things that were kind of, like I said, related to diamond painting, but not necessarily diamond painting to kind of give myself that little bit of space from it. Um, I'm still working on my filming schedule. I, I there have been, especially this month, I don't know if it was because I was building up to that September challenge. And then once that was over, it was kind of like, huh? I don't know if I forgot to plan stuff well enough, but I just, this month there's been a lot of, Ooh, what am I going to do next? Sometimes that works out the best for me. I do some of my best thinking. Sometimes that's not true. We'll just have to see how it goes. Um, I do want to, one of the things I do want to share is I want to share my new workspace. Now that I have my adjustable height table and I've worked with it for a little bit. So I was talking to my husband and saying, you know, should I, should I share with them, you know, what this looks like? I think it would be interesting. I mean, I always love look, looking at people's workspaces and seeing how they work differently from me. Uh, I know that I've had a couple comments from people about 
you know, everyone, like I bought a drafting table because everyone talked about how good they are. And if you need a drafting table, great. I personally, one of the things people wanted drafting tables for was because being able to put your work at an angle or buying a table easel for your work so that you could put your work at an angle would alleviate a lot of people's back and neck brains. I don't have that problem. Um, even just sitting here like right now working on this, um, I think it's because of my eyesight. <laughs> I have to uh, maintain a certain distance. Weird as it sounds, I've gone from being nearsighted to being farsighted. And so um, I actually see better if I keep myself further away. And so my natural instinct when I can't see something is to lean closer, but that actually make it, makes it less in focus for me. And so I consciously have to remember sometimes, especially when I'm diamond painting, and I'm like, I can't see, oh, it's because I'm too close. I need to back up. And so I don't know if it's because of that, that I just don't have the back and neck issues that other people seem to have. I don't know, but I don't. Um, and so I found myself, even when I had the drafting table, 90% of the time I would end up working on our dining room table anyway, because I was just more comfortable. Part of it was when I brought my drafting table, the whole table itself tilted. So like I didn't have any room to set my drills, to set a drink, to set my pens, all that kind of stuff. I had to hold my tray and I just didn't like that part of it. And so I've been much happier with the adjustable table and especially finding since finding out that my hip is a lot of the issue and I need to be able to, you know, remind myself to easily sit and stand. It's just been amazing. But I, I was talking to my husband and I said, you know, how am I going to film this? First of all, I have to do it kind of when everyone is gone because it's basically, it's not in the middle of our living room, but it's in our living room. So it's not the most easy place to film. Lighting can be weird. I have no idea what the acoustics are going to be like. Um, I think it'll be okay, but I need to do it when, you know, everybody's basically gone so that I don't have people traipsing in and out of the living room while I'm trying to film. And, um, but I want you guys to see it. I'm, I'm actually really enjoying it, but I was joking with my husband because he's like, oh yeah, I think you should film it. I think people would really, and I'm like, yeah, but I feel like I should clean it up. And he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, it's messy. <laughs> I feel like it's messy. And I'm a neat freak. And so I want it to be neat. And he's like, yeah, but that's not how you work. And I was like, yeah, but, and he's like, no, they want to know how you, and I'm like, okay, you're probably right. Like, I don't want people to clean all theirs up. And you know, when I'm looking at it, like I'm not judging people for it being messy. I'm just looking at how do you set things up? That's different than, than I work. And do you have cool ideas that I can steal and use? Cause that would mean I work better, faster, more comfortably, whatever. And, and that I think is the biggest thing for me too, is, um, I want to be comfortable. And, you know, like I said, that's why I understand people getting the drafting tables and stuff, because if you do have back and neck problems, I'm sure the drafting tables work much, much better than my flat table setup that I have. But for me, I love it. I'm, it's been so much better. My, my knee has actually been better. I still don't stand up as often as I should, but it's now much easier to do that. I don't have to move things around. I, I like, I can stand up and still keep diamond painting if I want to, if I want to get up and go wander off and go do something else for a little bit and come back to it, I can do that very easily, but it's just as easy. Like when my husband's watching football games on the weekend, you know, I will set up, sit down with it in the down position where I have it. And that's the other thing. I can adjust it to a height that's good for me because I'm short. So sometimes I want it lower, but sometimes I want it higher so I can move it around. And then when my watch reminds me that I, Hey, you've been sitting for too long, get up and move around. I can get up and move around. And you know, if I want to stop diamond painting and then go take a break and do something else, then I can do that. If I want to keep diamond painting, then I just stand up, raise the desk where I need it. I do have to adjust my, I have a standing floor magnifying slash light that I use. Uh, I think I'm going to be getting a tabletop one 
because having to move it up and down to adjust for the table gets annoying sometimes. So I think I'm gonna get one that just sits on the table so it's always at the perfect height and I don't have to move it around and I have plenty of room on the table to do that. But yeah, so that's something that I'm gonna be doing is that, you know, I wanna show it to you guys so you can see how I'm working, um, if this would maybe be a solution for someone else. Um, you know, maybe it won't be. There are plenty of setups that I see that I think, ooh, I could never work that way. But that's the beauty of it, right? We, we, all, we, we need to learn from each other. Like I can look at someone's setup and go, okay, you know, A, B, and C don't work for me, but ooh, that does. Let me try that. And that will improve my workflow and let me do things better, faster, more efficiently, whatever. And that lets me have more enjoyment out of it. So I told my husband, you're right. I just need to film it warts and all. I'm not going to clean it up. I'm going to show you guys how I've been working on stuff. I don't know if that's a video that's going to come out this, this next week. I'm going to try. So fingers crossed if I get it done. That depends on whether or not I can get everyone out of my hair long enough to get it finished. So maybe I'll get up really early in the morning before my son's awake, but before my husband, after my husband's left for work. And then we'll see what happens. Maybe I can get it done then, but but yeah, I want you guys to see it because I'm, I'm happy with how it's been going. Okay. What else? Uh, let me pick another color here while I'm thinking about it. Where's my J? J, J. Okay. Um, so we're over halfway through October, which means that DP for bets is coming up next month. So I hope you guys are getting ready and excited for that. I've already got a couple of my own canvases kitted up and ready to go. And I'm actually ready to start working on them. So I'm like, I think that's part of my problem with Miss Havisham is I'm like, I want to go, I want to go, I want to work on these. And some of it is that they're much smaller and Miss Havisham is kind of a big painting. But they all got to get done. So, so I have a couple already kitted up and ready to go. I have several other ones that I'm going to be doing for DP for vets, I hope. Uh, and then of course I want to finish this one because uh, this is one of my big 10. I've got another one that I need to unbox and work on so I can finish it. And then of course I have my um, heaven and earth designs that I need to finish. And I want to do some more conversions like that. Like I bought some charts from heaven and earth designs, but they're really kind of big. I want to do someone and I want, I think it was diamond painting madness did is this cute little painting. And it said, I need some coffee before any hocus pocus. And it had like a witch's hat on it, but it was just a really cute kind of small painting. And it was so cute. And I was like, oh, I want to do something like that. Well, if I can get myself to where I'm doing, you know, cross stitch conversions, then that opens up like a whole new world of paintings and things. And now that I kind of have under my belt, buying drills from people and all that kind of stuff, you know, those are some of the projects I want to work on. But those are projects for next year. I think that's part of my problem is I've been planning for next year. And so now I'm all super excited about it. I want to do this. I want to do this, but I got to get through this year first. <laughs> I have no patience. My husband complains about that all the time. And I freely admit it. I don't. I feel like that's one of those lessons that the universe keeps trying to teach me over and over and over because I don't have any patience. And I should learn because... I mean, I'm well aware things do not happen on my schedule much as I want them to. Uh, anyway, yeah, so it was kind of a, um, a reflective week for me, I guess, where I just kind of went, you know, I'm spending too much energy kind of focusing on what other people are doing and worrying about them instead of worrying about myself. And that's not where I want to be and what I want to be doing. Ooh, and I just had a flash on the lyrics of Chess the Musical. Has anybody ever seen that? Heard it? I've never seen it, but I got the, they released the music for it. 
It was a Tim Rice musical. They released the music for it to make enough money off of it to be able to put on the musical because I guess they couldn't find backers or whatever. My high school years, my best friend and I, we sang chess all the time. Anyway, that was a random thought to share with you. Sorry, don't know why I got off tangent there. But anyway, chess, musicals, love it, love them. Uh, what else? Okay, so anyway, yeah, it was a reflective week. And yeah, I just made me focus back on, I need to focus on the process of diamond painting. That's what it's all about for me. You know, the peace, the joy, the relaxation that I get from the actual process of diamond painting. It's about the journey, not the destination, to name another cliche. And if I flounder a little bit, that's okay. Eventually I'll get my feet back underneath me and it'll all be good. And that's enough metaphors for today. Okay, in happier news, I mailed out some more random acts of kindness this week. I've seen a couple people have already gotten there, so yay. Uh, I think I mailed out 12. So I think I have two more people to go and then I've mailed out, I'll be caught up through September, which is huge. because <laughs> I felt for a while there I was never going to get caught up. So got those mailed out. However, I discovered when I went to go mail them that uh, I may be putting those on hold until after the holidays because when I went to go purchase them, I'm like, why are these more expensive than usual? Oh, well, the postal service is adding a holiday surcharge for packages from now until I think it said January 5th or 6th, something like that. And it's not just like a flat surcharge. So like it's, you know, X amount per package. No, it's based on how much your package costs. So the more your package costs to mail, the more the surcharge is, which I guess makes sense, but it's like, ugh. so yeah, the cost of postage has gone up and I have some other things that I want to do. So I may put those on hold until after the first of the year. I, I haven't decided yet. We'll see how things go. Um, because I finally decided what I'm going to do in December. So I had several ideas that I'd been kicking around in December that I wanted to do in December. And I hadn't quite decided which ones I wanted to do. And I was still kind of, do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? And I hadn't made up my mind. And I didn't want to do another Advent project. I did an Advent project last year. And not that there's anything wrong with that. I know there's lots of people who are going to be doing them. I, I may do an Advent project, but I'm not going to be like videotaping it and, and doing one every day in a video like I did last year. I, I, we just may possibly have other things going on and, so I didn't want to commit to make, you know, to doing a video every single day in the month of December, or at least until December 25th. And so, yeah, I decided I wasn't going to do that. Then the question is, well, then what, what am I going to do? I mean, I don't have to do anything, but I wanted to do something. I wanted to do something fun. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to do something for the 12 days of Christmas. And my initial thought was, you know, I'll do... 12 of this, 11 of that, blah, blah, blah. Well, that just got to be prohibitively expensive. Speaking of, when I was looking up information on all of that, I think I saw somewhere that if you actually bought all the things from the 12 Days of Christmas song, you know, like 12 partridges in a pear tree, all of that, you know, you have 12 of one, but then you have to buy 11 twice, so that's actually 22, 10, three times, so that's third. Anyway, it's going to be something like half a million dollars. I don't know about you, but I don't have that kind of money laying around to spend on someone. So even just doing 12 of something, 11 of something, even trying to keep it kind of small, like I was trying to do diamond painted relating things and, you know, 12 release papers and 11 packs of wax and stuff like that. E even at that, it still got kind of prohibitively expensive. Having said that, I don't know that the thing I've decided to do is going to be that much cheaper, but it's going to be more fun. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a, uh, 12 days of Christmas thing. 
I don't want to give everyone the details. I realize I just said, here's what I'm going to do. And then I said, no, I'm not going to tell you, but I'm going to change my mind. That's my prerogative, right? I don't have all the details worked out yet. So I don't want to tell you exactly what I'm going to do, but be watching for that because I will tell you before it starts happening. Uh, but it's going to be, so it'll be after Advent. So it will start Christmas day and then I'll do something for the 12 days of Christmas. Um, I just got to work out the logistics of it and make sure that I have the funds to do what I need. So if any of you generous souls out there would like to help defund, um, defund, would like to help fund, gosh, my brain, uh, would like to help with the funding of, that's what I'm trying to say. You can, uh, donate to me via PayPal. You can donate to me via Ko-fi, uh, to help de, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? The, to, to de, de, All I can think of is debug, and that's not the word I'm looking for. It'll come to me after I'm done filming, I'm sure. Anyway, to help with the cost of postage, um, not required, not saying anybody has to donate, but if you would like to, it would be super appreciated because I really want to do this. Uh, and that would let me like make it even a little bit better, but. So I'm going to do something for the 12 days of Christmas. That way I figure everybody's done with their Advent projects. Christmas will be, well, I mean, it's going to start the day of Christmas, but essentially at that point, Christmas is over. Like everybody's done Christmas shopping. Hopefully all the stress and all the related things that go along with the holidays will kind of be behind us. And I thought it would be fun to just kind of take those 12 days and just be like, Oh, let's have a little breather and do something fun. So that's the goal. Like I said, I still got to work out some of the details, but I think it's going to be super fun. So keep an eye out for that. It's not going to be like a diamond painting event, like DP for vets or anything like that. It's not going to be, um, you know, anything like that. Um, it's just going to be a fun thing. So yeah. That's suitably vague, right? So everyone can be simultaneously interested and frustrated. No, that's not my goal. I don't want you to be frustrated. But anyway, I think it's going to be cool. But like I said, I still got some details to work out. I'm slowly accumulating the stuff I need. So we'll see. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to say, I'm, I'm telling you, I am going to do it. I'm just not going to tell you what it is yet. Okay. And I'm going to shut up and stop talking because I'm probably just irritating people by saying something so vague because if it was me, I'd be irritated, but I want it to be a surprise. Okay. So I think I'm done. I have no idea how long I've talked for, uh, but I made some progress. So, okay, good. I wasn't sure when I was working, if you could see some of the stuff I was doing up here, but it looks like you could. So that's good. Okay. So let me zoom out. So you can see actually where I got to. I feel like I made some pretty good progress. I've got a pretty good chunk of this done now. Got these branches and flowers and things, and I've touched a little bit on the koala, so that's all good. Um, yeah, I hope I talked long enough that you guys got some stuff done on whatever your projects are. Uh, I hope I said some things that made sense and it wasn't just a complete shamble of a ramble, but if it was, hey, that's how the cookie crumbles. And now I want a cookie. Okay. That's it for me today, guys. Like I said, I hope you made some progress on whatever project you're working on. I hope you had a good time listening to me. Uh, if you didn't, that's on me and I apologize. I'll try to do better next time. If you did great, let me know by leaving a thumbs up. If you like the video, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification icon. And if you really like me, share my socials around. I am at Diamond Painting Anonymous on Instagram. I have a Facebook group and a Facebook page. You can find the links for those down below uh, and share my channel. That would be awesome. I would love that. Uh, the more the merrier. That's it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for watching.